progesterone is given in menopause to prevent something called endometrial hyperplasia, which is something that can happen with estradiol. But is progesterone cream, also called transdermal progesterone, an effective way to get adequate progesterone levels? Will a topical progesterone cream actually protect the uterus? I'm Steve Goldring from simplehormones.com. I help patients and healthcare practitioners with easy to understand patient education resources, especially about hormone optimization. And menopause is a particular specialty of mine. If you're a patient and you're interested in having your progesterone or estradiol optimized in menopause, I'd recommend seeing a hormone optimization specialist. That's somebody who really knows the best ways to prescribe and measure your progesterone levels as well as your estradiol to make sure they're not too high, not too low, but just right. The idea that progesterone in a transdermal or topical cream form is an effective and safe treatment for menopause was widely promoted by a family practice physician named Dr. John R. Lee in his 1996 book, What Your Doctor May Not Tell You About Menopause. Well, I'm planning to review Dr. Lee's book at some point in the future on this channel. I'll talk about the points he and I agree about, as well as a few that we don't really see eye to eye on. If you subscribe to my Simple Hormones channel and click the notify button, I'll let you know when I post a review of Dr. Lee's book. Dr. Lee's work has had a profound and lasting impact on the way both patients and some doctors think about hormones and menopause. Lee's influence has even outlasted him as he passed away in 2003. Progesterone protects the uterus from the harmful effects of estrogens, particularly estradiol, which is the most prominent and most powerful human estrogen, the most important. Progesterone prevents something called endometrial hyperplasia. That's something that, if left unchecked, can lead to endometrial cancer. Progesterone has many other roles in addition to protecting the uterus from overgrowth. Progesterone eliminates many of the serious symptoms of menopause that estradiol doesn't really touch. Things like depression, anxiety, insomnia. Progesterone, at least when we use the exact same progesterone that's made by the ovaries before menopause, that kind of progesterone, sometimes called bioidentical progesterone, can help prevent breast cancer. Progesterone has some effect on reducing hot flashes and it can help strengthen bones, preventing osteoporosis. I would say that estradiol is better at both reducing hot flashes and strengthening bones, but progesterone does tend to make a difference in both of those problems. In order to understand the complex interactions of estrogens and progesterone, or estradiol and progesterone more specifically, we'll need to take a look at a simplified version of the normal reproductive cycle for a healthy menstruating women. The female reproductive cycle is divided into three phases called the follicular phase, the ovulatory phase or ovulation, and the luteal phase. The follicular phase starts right after menstruation and goes until around day 14. During the follicular phase, estradiol is the most prominent hormone. The ovaries produce estradiol to stimulate one of the follicles. Those are sort of like pre-eggs, and the estradiol stimulates those into becoming actual eggs. The follicular phase ends with the ovary popping out an ovum or an egg in a process called ovulation. Ovulation is really more of an event than a phase. It's over just a few hours and it takes place right around day 14 or so of a woman's cycle. After ovulation, there's another 14 day, approximately, a phase called the luteal phase. During the luteal phase, progesterone is the prominent hormone. The luteal phase is designed to build up the lining of the uterus just in case the egg that was released at ovulation happened to get fertilized. If there is a fertilized egg, the uterus is kind of preparing itself for that fertilized egg to be implanted and ultimately to grow a baby. Especially during the luteal phase, there's sort of a dance with these opposing hormones. Estradiol is opposed to progesterone. The whole system is very dependent on both these crucial hormones. Without one or the other, the system simply doesn't work the way it's supposed to. One of them, especially estradiol, tends to be a little high sometimes in relation to the other, progesterone. And that might cause a few uncomfortable symptoms. Maybe PMS symptoms, migraine headaches, serious cramping and bloating. 
This is sometimes referred to as something called estrogen dominance. The term estrogen dominance was coined by a PhD biologist named Dr. Ray Peet. Dr. John Lee embraced estrogen dominance wholeheartedly after hearing Peet speak at a conference in the early 70s. Lee eventually made estrogen dominance a huge catchphrase in the natural hormone replacement community, along with his own term, hormone balance, that he repeats a lot in his book. When a woman gets into her late 40s, more or less, her progesterone level really starts to gradually decline. By about age 51, on average, she'll stop having periods, and she'll also pretty much make little to no estradiol or progesterone. For about four to six years before that time, which is the onset of menopause, or often called perimenopause, she'll have estradiol levels that kind of fluctuate up and down all over the place, along with a steady decline of progesterone. It's during this perimenopause time, the four to six years right before menopause, when estradiol can, in a sense, dominate over progesterone. This idea is, it makes some sense based on sort of common hormone patterns, the loss of progesterone and those wildly fluctuating estradiol levels that I mentioned. Increased progesterone levels may help women in perimenopause so that that progesterone is better able to sort of oppose the high estradiol level that she's experiencing. During perimenopause, progesterone may be given in a cyclical manner, like maybe only during the luteal phase or the last two weeks of her menstrual cycle. That sort of mimics the way progesterone is more prominent during the luteal phase, days 14 through around day 28. Progesterone is available in several different dosage forms, including one called an oral micronized progesterone capsule, uh, sometimes filled with powder if you get it from a compounding pharmacy, or it's filled with oil if you get a manufactured product. Progesterone is available in a transdermal or a topical cream. Progesterone comes in a vaginal cream that's inserted into the vagina. Progesterone can be uh, given in a sublingual trochee that's placed underneath your tongue. It can also be in a vaginal or a rectal suppository. Probably the two dosage forms that are most commonly used are oral capsules and a transdermal or topical cream form of progesterone. During perimenopause, when the level of progesterone needs to be a bit higher, but there's not a specific target level you're shooting for, then the dosage form of progesterone is a little less crucial. Almost any of these forms will provide enough progesterone absorption to help with those bothersome perimenopause symptoms, which sometimes are called estrogen dominance. As I mentioned, one of the functions of estradiol in the reproductive cycle is to cause a buildup of the lining of the uterus to prepare it for implanting a fertilized egg. Well, that buildup caused by estradiol, perfectly natural, is not that big of a deal when your estradiol is coming from your ovaries. The ovaries are sending out a gradually increasing level of estradiol over the follicular phase. That's the first 14 days of the menstrual cycle. There are a couple of little bursts or extra peaks of estradiol right before and a little bit after ovulation, and then estradiol really drops off. The action of progesterone helps overcome that growth of the lining of the uterus caused by estradiol, and everything tends to work out fine. Ultimately, progesterone and estradiol drop off and the, the uterine lining sloughs off and then bleeds, and that's what causes menstrual bleeding. The problem comes after a woman goes into menopause, the loss of estradiol causes major symptoms, hot flashes, weight gain, irritability, mood swings. The solution to those symptoms is often replacing that estradiol so that that postmenopausal woman returns to an optimal level of estradiol. Unfortunately, the estradiol replacement also causes a buildup of that uterine lining again because there's not much progesterone around that can cause too thick of a uterine lining, endometrial overgrowth or hyperplasia. So the solution to estradiol caused uterine overgrowth is to give progesterone. Oral micronized progesterone has been shown to work very well to stop that uterine overgrowth that's caused by estradiol. So my recommendations for progesterone are number one, before you go into menopause, progesterone creams are fine. They may help some women with some of the symptoms of estrogen being a little high in relation to progesterone, the so-called estrogen dominance. And as I mentioned, they can be given in a cyclical fashion, so progesterone toward the latter half of the cycle. 
The second recommendation is after you stop having periods, I'd strongly suggest these two treatments. Estradiol in either an oral tablet or in a transdermal cream form to help with hot flashes, with weight gain, irritability, and other menopause symptoms. But number two, progesterone in an oral capsule form. And I recommend an oral capsule form for two reasons. Number one, oral progesterone is metabolized in your liver and broken down into hormones that are more easily removed from your body. These metabolites, as they're called, are the main reason progesterone helps you sleep. If you take progesterone in a transdermal cream form, you just aren't going to get enough of those metabolites to help with insomnia. Sleep is much more affected with an oral capsule of progesterone. Secondly, oral progesterone has been proven to prevent the endometrial hyperplasia associated with estradiol replacement. There's no doubt oral progesterone protects the uterus. Transdermal progesterone, on the other hand, does not have that same kind of strong proof. I've looked closely at the clinical trial data and it's pretty weak from my perspective. Patients using progesterone creams frequently develop thickened uterine linings that make some of the providers that I work with kind of nervous. So my hormone providers will switch women from creams to oral capsules to help protect their uterus, especially if they're taking a full dose of estradiol, enough to help with hot flashes, weight gain, and irritability. Well, if you're a hormone optimization provider and you're interested in taking a look at some of these studies that I've been talking about, I've got a bibliography of menopause references I put together for you. There's a PDF version that you can print out and maybe give to patients or give to a colleague. I've also created a public PubMed bibliography that I'm constantly adding studies to. That might be a great resource to help you get a handle on the research behind hormone optimization and hormone replacement therapy, especially for menopause. Click the link on this video that says get menopause references and I'll email that out to you. I'll also send you some helpful patient education resources in your email. If this video has been helpful at all, click the like and subscribe buttons and get notified anytime I post a new one. Thanks so much for watching. I look forward to talking with you again soon.